Hello everyone, my name is Hallie Phillips and today I'm going to do a special review on the new, bold, wild, and eccentric HBO TV show Euphoria. The question I'm going to answer today is, is Euphoria a visual fantasy and how it represents true teenage culture in life? Looking at this show, we can all see firsthand how graphic and raw and cutting edge it is in its stories it tells. The characters are daily living in their own personal battles to find their identity and purpose in a chaotic and majestic modern culture. Through these battles, these characters explore who they are in different and detrimental ways in a visually vibrant and stunning cinematic picture of neon brilliance and movement. This boldness to express these characters and their stories and beautiful cinematography is something to be admired about this show. But how realistic are these extremes in this fantastical filmmaking? To answer this question, we first need to look at the outlying themes the show embodies. As a teenage filmmaker, I was instantly captivated by the show's focus of this loss of purpose and identity in a constantly evolving world. The cinematography encapsulating this theme really helps emotionally tie in this feeling of hopelessness and wandering and captivation these characters get tied up in through their search for substantial meaning in life. The constant presence of glowing light in every scene pulls us into the passion of each moment, whether it be the red underlighting of these kids on their way to a party signaling danger and imminence or vibrant luscious orange covering while Jules is riding her bike. These elements put us empathetically into each of these breaths of life. Through pulling us into each setting with the characters, this show is able to convey different elements of this theme through each persona. Rue, although being the utmost drug addict, is the center symbol for this branching theme of addiction to finding sense of euphoria and meaning. Jules, as we see, is addicted to dominating femininity. Kat, on the other hand, is addicted to dominating masculinity. And then we have Cassidy, who is addicted to being dominated by masculinity. From these three figures in the show, the rest of the characters are being threatened and mutated based on their actions and transformations. Nate instantly recognizes Jules as a threat to his masculinity, and everything in his life he has clung onto for reinsurance and dominance. Kat's transformation changes how Wes approaches the world, his life clinging onto his feelings for her. Lexi has to learn to protect her sister through her endeavors, her being the only particle of family she can relate to anymore. All this dissects into each corner of reality of how teenagers cope with the society of life, whether that be overcoming societal pressures, or clinging onto what they offer, or finding relationships and distractions along the way to run away from it as a whole. Starting with Rue, we see how depression and overwhelming death of her father has sent her down a hole of wondering what the meaning of life really is anymore. In the first episode, we see how real this emotion is for her, a single moment of breathlessness and voidness from it all, being true serene fulfillment and happiness. That one moment is what she has learned to cling onto to avoid the world as a whole, seeing it plagued with sorrows. Stan Lemonsons, the show writer and producer, is an ex-drug addict himself. Seeing him dive into each of the normalities of what it's like to go through these stages of desperation of someone addicted to drugs is phenomenal. He parallels these intense stages of loss and searching for meaningness with the subtle liveliness of the exact same theme in everyday high school lives. We also see through Rue how, in it all, what she really values most is relationships. Not romantic ones, but authentic relationships of love she experiences with her family and with Jules. When she no longer feels this love from her family, she continues on to find that sense with Jules. Her euphoria comes from the love and appreciation she has for Jules and what happiness she can derive from their complex intimacies. But when in the finale she has the choice to either run away with Jules or stay, her connection to the unconditional love of her family remains, and she starts to consider how she's impacted the love that they all have for her. She gains empathy through this relationship, and that's why she chooses to stay. We see though that when she does, she falls back into the black hole of the world and relapses. Visually, this has to be one of the most amazing experiences to go through as a viewer. Rue singing her inner mantra of herself and stumbling outside onto this exploding choir, fervidly lifting her up and swirling incredibly around her, was just stunning. It tied up this whole theme of how love and happiness is reaching out for her through her family, and although she is lost and stumbling on her own, she has these connections she can cling on to for hope. 
Continuing on to Jules, we see expressed through her this sense of dominating femininity and fulfilling her life full of distractions so she can eradicate her insecurities. From the very beginning of her life, she has never been comfortable in her own skin and has been run down by her feeling of never being enough. Through her times of being isolated at a mental facility after her parents couldn't find a solution to her self-destructive coping methods, she's learned to isolate herself into her own fantasy. She continues to do this through distracting herself with online relationship with men, seeking to dominate that part of her world. Her rendezvous to the city with her old friend from school is another prime example of her fleeing sorrows of life with noise and dominating sense of partying with someone else. Through Jules, we really get to see how connected we can all become through digital media as well. We saw how easy it was for meet up with a complete stranger in the first episode, or how it was for her to fall into an online relationship with Tyler. In that sequence where she is messaging Tyler, or aka Nate, we see this theme of how digital media is so available to get connected through, and how deceiving it all can be. We see the same theme apply with Kat. Kat, who has spent her high school years so far living timidly through the flow of society, suddenly becomes transformed when a sex tape of her is leaked. This very sex tape was an effect of her succumbing to the peer pressure of society and transforming her mindset of what her body means to her. Through this transformation, we see her seeking confidence and reassurance through dominating men with her online portfolio and attitude of life, having hookups whenever she feels like it. Her compliance with technology, though, feeds this theme of how utilizable digital media has become to us. Kat seeks through her media and self-persona the confidence she lacks so much from her life. This confidence what she relies on to fill up that broken part of her. Cassidy is also missing this confidence of herself through the traumatic experiences she had through her father leaving her at an early age. She lacks that figure in her life and continues to let herself be with overruling and unfit men just to satisfy that urging feeling that she's not enough on her own. That's why when she ends up getting pregnant with McKay, she feels like she finally has a purpose in life and that he just might have given that to her. Reality soon settles in for her and we see how much of a turning point her abortion is for her. She finally sees how much she has turned her life into something she can't rely on for fulfillment any longer. It's not hard to believe this is the very same story some girls face in their journey through high school. Overall, each one of these characters is a representation of what teenagers seeking purpose in life seek. Though not every teenager seeks to dominate men or women or society, there is a seeking for what life is for them and what it is worth and what their aspirations as a person should be. In high school, we are constantly bombarded with clubs and colleges and exams to test ourselves, as well as relationships and drama that test us as people. These life occurrences shape us who we are, as these characters were shaped in the show. Euphoria managed to capture this aspect all while including elements of digital media, modern fashion, makeup, and vernacular well. The show's makeup artist, Daniela Davey, did an amazing job of showing how the characters are trying to express themselves in vibrant ways in society. So all in all, Euphoria has been able to maintain a representation of teenage culture, but in an extreme context. Each of these character stories has the total theme of seeking purpose in life, but the show managed to saturate this and take it to the furthest end of the spectrum for us to witness. We can all agree we know a Rue, we know a Cassidy, we've seen a Cat. We can point out each character of the show and know their actions. What this show managed to do is instead of leaving themselves to be looked at for their actions, we see their stories and what has been fed into their lives to create this exaggerated form of desperation. So this show, while being criticized for being extreme, should rather be praised for its bold stories it has chosen to tell. These stories should not be looked as a collective representation of what life is like as a high schooler, or what should be set as normalities for a high schooler, but rather what extreme reality many teens in life have to face. It shows us these outlying tales that modern society has formed while compressing in these everyday themes. So in conclusion, Euphoria was able to capture the fundamentals of what it is to be a teenager living in modern society, delicately exploring extreme pathways of this lust for identity through its characters and visually encapsulating it with its stunning cinematography and musicality. Accepting the show for its boldness to show these stories is the first step to learning to understand them and what they represent in our society today.